Reef Dudes is sponsored by Ecotech Marine and Bulk Reef Supply. A month or two ago, we upgraded the office tank with a lithium battery fire backup, and now we're going to upgrade the water box with some solar and a lithium battery. What's going on, guys? Devin from Reef Dudes. Now, if you remember about a month and a half ago, I ordered a Power Queen battery off Amazon, used that for the office tank. So something really cool happened. Power Queen saw it. They reached out to me and asked if I want to try their 100 amp hour self-heated version. I was like, heck yes, I do. So I love lithium batteries, but the one issue with them is you can't charge them if it's below zero. And being in Canada, winter times here, that can be a possible issue. And my battery bank for this tank is outside. So what we're gonna do today, we're gonna test this baby out and we're gonna use the self-heating one. So this is really cool because you can use it down to I think minus 25 or 30. There's an internal heating pad and when it drops below a certain temperature, it kicks on and it'll keep the battery warm so you can still charge it and you're not gonna cause any damage to the battery. So that is super duper cool. Um, now I do have a lead acid battery bank on there now, but it is extremely old. Like I'm surprised it's still working. It's probably at a much reduced capacity but this is a good excuse to upgrade it. So just as a bit of an update, this is a project I did many years ago. I got four 100 watt panels that I put on the side of my deck. And that wraps around and goes into my little solar charging station area. All of them feed into this MPP controller by Epever. And I do have another smaller one of these, and I think I'm gonna do a separate one um, because lead acid batteries charge at a lower voltage than lithium. So we're gonna have to do a higher voltage. So I think I'll just take one or two panels and use that to keep the lithium one lithium iron phosphate one topped off. Got a bunch of little low voltage breakers, disconnects. Um, this is my wire running to the MP60s in the house. So it's, going, it's a fused wire. Now it is important to note that whatever you are running off of batteries, you do want to make sure you have a fuse or a breaker on it, just as a safety precaution in case anything ever gets shorted out. And we're going to be using a secondary EPEVER charge controller that I had laying around. And the main purpose of this is since we need different charging voltages for the different battery chemistries, we're going to separate them out so they each have their own controller. Now for this, the heart of this is going to be the Power Queen 100 amp hour. General rule when you're wiring stuff, you want to keep your solar panels as close as you can to the charge controller and your charge controller as close as you can to the batteries. Helps minimize loss throughout the system. Uh, the other important thing to do is whatever charge controller you do plan to use if you're using lithium is to make sure it is compatible with it. Um, and that basically just means it has a higher charging voltage. I believe it's 14.6-ish for my battery, so it's probably fairly standard for lithium. So charge controller is fairly simple. This one's Amazon EP Ever MPPT, which means it kind of maximizes the usefulness it gets out of it. Very, very easy. Uh, you got your solar panel hookup. So your positive, your negative, you got your battery positive, negative, and you can have your load positive, negative. So if you want to use, say, run lights, you could have them turn on at night through this. I'm just going to wire mine directly to the battery so it's always on. Um, now on this one, there's a communication port. And I do have a screen hooked up to that one, which I'm going to temporarily move over to this one, just so we can program the custom battery voltage. Um, there's also a temperature sensor. You could use this to cut off charging if the temperature is too low. Again, the batteries have that built into it, and they have the auto heating feature, which is super cool. Um, so I'm kind of stoked for that. But yeah, so we'll get this baby hooked up. Another thing to note, usually you have to hook these up to the batteries before you can hook them up to the solar panels. I know some people may find solar, you know, a little bit intimidating, but it's actually relatively easy to do. Very, very simple hookups to build yourself a sweet little system. Now, the nice thing about this is if there was an extended power outage, it would be recharging itself as it's being used. And that's really going to keep your tank going for a lot, lot longer and extended outage, which I think is really, really cool. So don't be intimidated by solar. You can see, you know, it's only really a couple wires to hook up. You know, I added all this stuff in for breakers and disconnects, not necessarily required. Um, you would want to have a fuse on your load just in case the wire is ever, you know, touched or something. So nothing's going to short out. You know, pop the fuse and there's an arrest. So this is the fuse that I have in line going towards the vortex. So it can charge and discharge down to minus 20 or minus 4 F. So that's pretty solid. Now the main thing that we got to do now is set up all the parameters for a custom battery on the charge controller. So I got this little guy here and it's going to use this to set it. So basically the main important bits are, you know, 14.4 volts for the charge. 14.6 for the boost, absorption 14.4 slash 14.6, over voltage disconnect 15 volts, open voltage reconnect 14.2, and 
Um, yeah, there we go. So she will set that up in the charge controller and we will be good to go to finish hooking up the solar panels. Now that we got our controller programmed for lithium, we can hook up our solar panels. So our battery is at 13.3 volts. We got 0.2 amps going into it. Beautiful, so let's finish cleaning up our wires and we will test this baby out. And the moment of truth, if we pull power, boom. You see it cuts over to battery backup mode. Um, and we take a look at the MP60 and it is definitely spinning. So that's pretty awesome to see. We have 100 amp hours of battery backup. So this thing should last days and days and days on the MP60s. So I'm pretty stoked for that. Now if the sun is shining and it's recharging as you're draining for it, you know, you're gonna go for ages and ages on battery backup slash solar, you know, probably could run the power ads forever off it, which would be pretty awesome. So really stoked to test out that new battery from Power Queen. The fact that it is self heating and can be used and charged up to minus 20 is pretty awesome. Um, I've always wanted to upgrade my battery bank outside to lithium, but again, just the temperature cold for, you know, that few weeks, month over winter, I've always been scared to do it, but now this is a perfect solution for it. So shout out to Power Queen. I definitely appreciate them hooking me up with that one to try it out and play with it. Um, I'm really happy with the other batteries, so super stoked to see how this one holds up over winter. And I will, of course, give you guys an update in a month or two once we get through the, the coldest season of the year and see how things are faring. But yeah, the tank is definitely nice and protected now. As always, guys, if you want to check anything out, we'll have links in the description. If you enjoyed this, hit that like button. If you're new, make sure you subscribe, and I'll catch you guys on the next video.